We have a few brand new AI video generation tools. I have a workflow that will give you the best AI video quality that I have ever seen. And there's an automatic sound effects tool that's actually pretty good. This is your AI film news of the week. I wanna give a special shout out to everyone for the well wishes with Curious Refuge joining Promise. We had hundreds of messages from all over the community. Seems like so many people are excited for this brand new era in storytelling. All right, let's get to the news. The first big news that I want to highlight is the fact that Alibaba has released their own AI video generation tool called WAN 2.1. The tool is pretty cool because it's actually open source, meaning you can download it on your computer and run it locally on your machine. Now, you don't have to do that. You can run it online. I'll show you in just a second how to do that. But the fact that it is free and open source is a big indicator that the bar is just going to continue to rise. If you go to the Hugging Face page, they actually have this page dedicated here to ranking the AI video tools in terms of quality. And they say WAN 2.1 is the best quality out of any of the AI video generators. I don't know if I quite agree with that, but the quality is pretty good. Now, this model is very interesting because it produces text to video, image to video, and also video to audio to create sound effects and soundscapes. It also has the ability to render text in both English and Chinese, which is pretty cool because a lot of these video systems have a hard time generating video with text. Now, the model is not the fastest video generation model. So for example, if you have an RTX 4090, it will take about four minutes to generate one five second video clip in 480p. So it can be pretty slow, especially if you're used to working with some of the faster AI video generators out there. But if you're not running the open source version on your computer, there's a couple different ways in which you can use one too. The first is on Hugging Face. So I'm here on Hugging Face and I should note that it can take a while because so many people are using this right now. But long story short, you can just type in a prompt. I have this long prompt here of a dog riding a scooter. It's like a whole thing. And you can see that we also can change the resolution here to whatever we want. We'll just run it at 720p and go ahead and click generate video. And you can see here's our generation here. We have a dog wearing headphones. There's a cat, a basket with like fruits and vegetables. He's on a skateboard riding on grass. And you can see it's pretty smooth. I should note that there is kind of this strange stepping motion that's happening with the render engine. This used to happen inside of Runway. Basically, it seems like the algorithm is chunking the video into maybe half second blocks and it has a hard time stitching those blocks together sometimes. So uh, it's not the most fluid movement in the world, but honestly, not too bad, especially considering it's open source. Another place that you can use one 2.1 is Korea. So to use Korea, all you have to do is go to their website, scroll down to the video section. And in the bottom left, there's a drop down menu. They have all of these video generation tools, which is really cool. And they have VO2, which is really fun. I'm going to go ahead and select one 2.1. We'll go ahead and paste our prompt here. An epic cinematic establishing drone shot of a castle on a mountainside. There's a fire. You get the idea. And go ahead and click generate. So here's the video that was generated after just a few minutes. You can see that in terms of overall realism, it's okay. There's also a bit of jitteriness. It almost feels like it's in like 15 frames per second as opposed to 24, but the quality is not that bad. So I wanna do the same thing for image to video. I typically like using image to video more than text to video, just cause you have more control over the color grading, the consistency with characters, all of those things. So we'll go ahead and go to start frame here. So we'll select our input frame. I basically just have this image that I actually generated in image effects from Google. It's just of this castle with this landscape and fires happening in the foreground. Looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and import that into Korea. And when you're ready, go ahead and click generate. And here's the result that we get from one two. Again, it does look pretty good. There's some really interesting dynamics in the flag at the top. The fire dynamics look cool, and there's little kind of particle pieces that are flying around. Now, the overall camera movement is pretty darn static. I wish there was a bit more of a sweeping drone movement because we did prompt that into the scene, but honestly, not that bad. Now, I do want to compare that to the output that you would get 
from Google VO, which is this. And you can see that the overall camera movement, the dynamics, they look just much better. Now, I do want to note that I do think the fire, the way that it's burning seems a little disproportionate. It kind of seems like the fire is smaller than what the scale would imply because it's flickering so fast. But altogether, I think it looks pretty good. And that kind of naturalistic camera shake really helps to sell the realism. We talked about it just a few weeks ago, but Project Starlight from Topaz Video is finally here. The thing that makes Project Starlight so special is the fact that it will take lower resolution footage, introduce noise into that footage, and then output a video clip that has a lot more quality. There have been some fantastic examples from the community especially in the non-scripted and documentary world. For example, we have this video footage here of just historical footage that basically is almost lost to time because it's so fuzzy. And then you're able to throw it through Project Starlight and get all of those details, but it still feels true to the original source content, which is just really cool. Same thing with this video of JFK here. You can see that the original is just very grainy. There's distortion speckles, dust spots, things like that. And then the final output is just much higher resolution. To use Project Starlight, all you have to do is go to the Starlight website. There's a link below this video. And when you're on the page, just click upload video in the bottom left. For our example, we're going to use this old timey video footage that we got from the Library of Congress here. It's called The Kiss. And you can see there's just tons of distortion. There's a whole frame in there where it looks like the actual original frame was completely damaged. So let's see what we get. All you have to do is click the render button. And after about 20 minutes, it does take a while, we have this video footage here. And you can see that it actually did a really amazing job. There's tons of fidelity. There's details in the hair, their face. It's really coming across as much more realistic and much more stable. I, I should note that like their face, it's not like dancing around. It really is being true to what they look like. Now, obviously, this is very cool for documentaries. But what does this actually do to AI footage? One of the problems we all have when we're working with AI clips is the fact that they can kind of look distorted and muddy and not that overall high quality, high resolution fidelity that we often get whenever we are working with real cameras. And that brings me to a workflow that I'm really excited to show you. Using this workflow, I think you will get the best video quality from AI that is currently possible. So first up, we need a video clip generated in AI. I have this video clip from Google VO2. I think it looks pretty good, but again, it is just kind of soft. Like even on YouTube, you can tell the overall video quality, especially the fidelity on the castle there, it's just softer than what we would probably want. Well, I can take that video clip, throw it through Project Starlight, and after a few minutes, you can see that we have this video generation and there's now a ton of fidelity on the castle. You can see individual pieces of the brick, the landscape has grass that you can see, little nudges in the rocks, and the overall quality just looks much, much more realistic. It's like Project Starlight went in and stabilized a lot of the flyaway noise that typically happens whenever you're working on an AI project. But this output from Starlight is only in 1080p. What if we want to have 4K or beyond in really high quality so that we can use it on a silver screen? Well, we're actually now going to use Topaz Video AI. So this is a tool that was introduced a little over a year ago, and basically it is really good at up footage. So I have the video clip loaded up from Project Starlight, and we'll just change the output resolution to 4K. You could go higher if you wanted to. It just really depends on the GPU of your computer. Now, there are a lot of different models that you can use to up your footage. The Proteus model is a good default model, but if you want the best overall quality with the just highest details, the Thea model is really, really good. So I'm going to select the Thea model and that's it. You can, of course, go in and fine tune and adjust the settings depending on the video clip that you have. But I really find that the default typically does a good job. And then you can go ahead and go to export and export your video clip. And that gives us this final clip here, which is in 4K. There's tons of fidelity with the rocks, with the landscape, and it looks really good. Now, if we really begin to analyze this video clip, there is a little bit of blurriness that can happen, 
But if you are distributing this in an online capacity or even a film screen that is not IMAX in large, you probably are going to have a hard time telling the difference between this and real live action footage. If you use this workflow to generate anything awesome, I would love to hear about it in the comments of this video. In industry news, in addition to Curious Refuge getting acquired last week, we read a story about Metaphysic actually getting acquired by DNEC. If you're not already familiar, Metaphysic is the team that has been doing a lot of the high-end face swapping out in Hollywood. Most notably, they worked on that project here with Tom Hanks and Robin Wright. Every time we see a demo of their tool, it really is mind-blowing, so it makes total sense that DNEG would acquire them because they make mind-blowing VFX. We also have brand new news from Pika Labs. So Pika 2.2 is here, and there's some new features that are pretty cool. Number one, you can generate video clips that are up to 10 seconds long. You can generate video clips now in 1080p. And most notably, you have the ability to do keyframing. So you can do start frames and end frames. To use Pika frames, all you have to do is go to the Pika Labs website and go ahead and click on the first frame icon. And we'll upload this image here of this animated character and this image of an ice cream cone. And now you need to type in a prompt. We'll say a cartoon woman transforms into an ice cream cone. Fantastic. And go ahead and click generate. And after a couple minutes, we have this generation here, and she just magically transforms to an ice cream cone, which, yeah, that was kind of cool. We also did the same test with two images, one of this woman and one of this woman. You can see we're wanting to do like a pan here, like a one shot uh, going from one character to the other. And we have this absolute nightmare fuel shot here. <laughs> So technically it did blend between those two images and we did not define that we didn't want the character just to turn into the other character, but kind of strange. So you can see that using this feature, you kind of have to be very selective about the images that you're using. I also want to give a special shout out and let you know that enrollment is open for our AI courses. This includes our brand new advanced AI filmmaking course, along with all of the courses at Curious Refuge. If you want to learn the latest industry trends and techniques and get connected with artists around the world and in the industry, we would love to have you inside of the program. You can learn more clicking the link below this video. The team at Magnific has released a new feature called Structure Reference that allows you to upload an input image and the output will be in a completely different style, but very true to the original image that you upload. Let me show you how to use it. Basically, all you have to do is go to the Magnific website and we need to upload an image for our Structure Reference. For our example, I'm going to use this really rough drawing of this character here. So let's go ahead and bring him into the scene. So let's say we want to take that drawing and turn it into a claymation character concept. What I'm going to say is a claymation character wearing a red shirt. Really easy. I'm not going to adjust anything else and go ahead and click generate. So after a few minutes, we have this result here and wow, like it did a really good job. And not only that, even the parts where the character is not visible at the bottom, it created this kind of like uh, this gradient fall off map here which is pretty interesting and yeah i mean it did a really really amazing job now one thing that i do want to note is it did give him a red shirt but also a green sweater so we might need to rerun that a couple times or change up the prompt but generally speaking it's really amazing that it gave it such high quality the team at Adobe came out with a few news updates that you need to know about. The first is Adobe Translate. It basically is allowing you to upload a video and you can translate it into a ton of different languages. They have an example over on their website. So we have this video clip of this guy. Let's go ahead and play. Whenever you're planning to hike or travel in a state or national park, there are a few key steps to take to ensure a safe and amazing adventure. Yes, there are. So using the tool, they translated to all of these languages here. Let's just go ahead and select, uh, let's do Italian. Ogni volta che hai intenzione di fare un'escursione o un viaggio in uno stato o in un parco nazionale, ci sono alcuni passaggi chiave da compiere per garantire un'avventura sicura e sorprendente. Okay, so you get the idea. I don't speak Italian, but I imagine that it did a pretty good job. I should note that the voice doesn't quite seem like it matches up entirely. It seems like it maybe synthesized his voice 
with someone else's voice. It doesn't really have the same accent or tonality that's exactly the same as the original guy, but it did a pretty good job. Now, having the ability to drag and drop your videos and get them translated is really incredible, but the problem with using Adobe is the price. So if you look at the pricing for their $30 a month plan, you get 23 minutes of audio and video. But if you compare that to Eleven Labs, which is kind of the industry standard for just drag and drop language translation, it actually gives you 100 minutes a month for only $11. So from a cost perspective, I don't really see a reason to use Adobe unless you just automatically have your company paying for your subscription. I also should note that the lips don't sync up. So if you use other tools like HeyGen, you could actually have the language translated and the lips synced up at the same time, which could go one step further. The team at Luma Labs released the ability to upload a video clip and get sound effects and audio in return. Basically, you can get automatic soundscapes. To use the feature, all you have to do is generate a video inside of Dream Machine. I have a single frame here of this like river, we'll just say a flowing river rushing water over rocks, and it'll take just a few minutes to generate the video clip. So after a few minutes, we have the video clip here. You can see it actually looks pretty good. And to create the audio, all you have to do is click audio and go ahead and click create. Now I should note that if you want your clip in 4K, be sure to upscale first and then do the audio step second. It doesn't work the opposite way. And here's our output. Okay, yeah, I suppose that is what you would get. Let me do another example here. So we have this image, we wanna run it through Dream Machine, do the audio output, and here is the final result. Yeah, I mean, I think that is what it would sound like. Obviously, if you're working on a film project, you're going to need to do a lot more sound design to help with the overall story. But for some automatic audio clips here, it's doing a pretty good job. So we came across a really funny social experiment this last week. Basically, some developers took Claude 3.7 Sonnet and connected it to Pokemon. And it's been playing Pokemon in the background for a while now. <laughs> And it's like a live stream on Twitch and everybody is like tuning in and really engaged. The funny thing is, though, it's super slow at playing Pokemon. Like it takes forever to take an action, but it is actually progressing throughout the game. It also introduced us to one of the funnier benchmarking projects that I've seen in a while, which is Claude models playing Pokemon. So you can see 3.7 Sonnet is just knocking it out of the park. There are also quite a few AI filmmaking meetups happening around the world. The Curious Refuge community has meetups in Palm Beach on March 6th, and we will be at the Austin International Film Festival for South by Southwest on March 14th and 15th. There's also quite a few other events popping up around the industry. Fabric AI is actually going to host the second annual AI filmmaking meetup at NAB. We'll have more about that soon and of course there are a ton of meetups happening around the world be sure to check out our ai film events page for more information and special shout out to machine cinema for hosting an incredible event in los angeles this last week and that brings us to our ai films of the week the first film that i want to shout out is one fire left by dale williams who goes by the real robot He's also connected with the Promise team. He created this really impressive anime inspired project that features really nice stylization and movement. I think it's really cool. It was created with Luma Ray 2. The second project that I wanna highlight is called Uncanny Planet by Jay Kingsley. Just a really fun use case of an AI documentary that kind of feels like an 80s fantasy documentary, which I don't feel like I've seen before. Uh, and they did a really good job at using a really cool style to cover up the aberrations that appear. So great job with that. And then finally, we have The Old Continent by Abel Art. Abel is one of our favorite AI creators. It's a really weird project, but the shots look really nice. And it features this like really gross Victorian aesthetic that I think would be really nice in a horror film. So great job with that one, Abel. Okay, thank you so much for watching this episode of AI Film News. If you want to join for the March session here at Curious Refuge, we would love to have you inside of the program. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe here on YouTube. It really helps the channel. And thank you so much for helping us get to 200,000 subscribers. That is absolutely wild. 
We couldn't have done it without you guys. Let us know if you have any ideas for future videos in the comments and have an amazing week.